and welcome back. Here's your latest California housing market update. Today's video is based on a brand new report that was just released yesterday at the time of filming this video. This is based on data from the California Association of Realtors. So in today's video, I am provide analysis regarding home prices, home sales, housing inventory, price reductions, and much, much more for the state of California. And my promise for you guys in today's video is that I'm gonna provide some original analysis, especially regarding home prices in California that I'm guessing you probably won't see anywhere else because based on my own analysis, of the California Association of Realtors data. With that said, of course, I have a lot to share, uh, but before that, if you guys are looking for a real estate agent referral, whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in California or for any parts of the United States, then check out that link below, which is homeandmoney.com slash Jason to get started today. And with that said, let's begin today's video. This report right here was released on April 18th uh, from the uh, California Association of Realtors and I actually didn't even read this. Um, instead, look at their uh, slides they actually provided here. So here's a high level overview about what's happening right now in California. This is for March, 2023. So on a seasonally adjusted annualized basis, there was about 281,000 home sales. That would be the total number of home sales um, over the next 12 months, given the current sales pace for March, and also they do a seasonal adjustment as well but 281,000, that's a decrease of 34.2% compared to one year ago in the number of closed single family detached houses. That actually excludes multifamily, it excludes brand new homes construction, and of course excludes uh, condos and townhomes, can't talk. Um, take a look at this as well, because the median sold price for single family houses was just under $792,000. That's a decrease of 7% compared to March of 2022. So home sold prices are down 7% compared to 12 months ago. But stay tuned uh, here in just a little bit because I'm gonna be sharing a lot more price trends regarding month to month changes, as well as how that change compares to years past. So for example, as I mentioned right here, home prices are down 7% compared to one year ago. However, though, they increased by 7.6% compared to the previous month. The California Association of Realtors also reported that the month supply is seen at 2.2 months for the state of California here. That's a 37.5% increase. Also days in the market, it's only taking 19 days to sell a house. That's a time frame when a home seller lists their house for sale until when they accept an offer from a home buyer. That's 19 days. Uh, this is a lagging indication though, just like uh, the month supply as well as the median sold price because this is based on contracts signed uh, back in what, late January and February this year. That's because in the state of California, it takes approximately 30 days to when you get your offer accepted to when you get your keys to the house. So the sale is finalized approximately 30 days after um, offer accepted. In any case, at 19 days, the median days on the market, that's a giant increase of 137.5 uh, compared to March of 2022. And by the way, I should have mentioned this, um, I actually make approximately three videos per month regarding the California housing market. Uh, this is video number one, in which I go over a high level overview about what we're seeing right now in, in California. But video two, I tend to talk about what's happening at the countywide level. There's approximately 51 counties that the California Association of Realtors tracks, and I actually make a video based on that as well. And video number three is based on my own analysis of home sold prices by county, uh, comparing year over year changes, month to month changes, and also compared to the past several years as well. So of course, stay tuned for those videos, which will probably be released in the next uh, several days here. Okay, with that said, let's talk about home sales in California. Uh, down again, 34.2% from one year ago and down 1% uh, month to month. That's a change from February to March this year. And the current levels right now, it's just um, kind of laughable really, uh, because home sales have been falling big time ever since the late uh, spring and early summer months last year. And the current pace right now, uh, uh, the, again, these are seasonally adjusted and analyzed. The current pace right now, we're looking at pre-COVID levels, is more or less on par going way back to early of 2008. 
Now here's something interesting as well. Here's year of year changes by price range uh, for home sales. So in the, at the top end of the market here, we're seeing the biggest decreases in home sales. So for home sales over $2 million for this March, it's down 47% year over year. In contrast, in the range of you know, zero, I don't know any houses that sell for $0, uh, but for houses that sold for less than 500,000, it's around a 20% decrease year over year. But that decrease is more than double that uh, for houses in the more expensive range, over $2 million. Um, here's something uh, interesting as well, at least I found to be interesting. Um, for the blue bar right here is 2023 uh, for March, and the uh, orange bar right here is March 2022. So for houses that sold for over $1 million, that represented approximately 29% of all home sales this March. Whereas in 2022, it was 33%. So the share of $1 million plus houses is actually going down by about four percentage points. However, though, for home sales for less than 500,000, it went from 24%, now it's 28%. So the share of home sales in the more affordable range, less than 500,000, has been increasing, whereas in the luxury market has actually been decreasing. And here's another way to look at this because home sales by price range um, have been decreasing on a year-over-year -year basis going back to the late spring in early summer months last year. Decreases on a year-over-year -year basis going all the way back to approximately one year ago. And this obviously is night and day difference compared to um, April and May of 2021, uh, where for example, um, home sales for over $2 million uh, surged by over 300% uh, compared to 2020. So this is all based on closed home sales. Again, a lagging indicator what our housing market was like approximately, what, one and a half months to one month ago. Uh, but for a leading indicator of home buying demand, uh, pending home sales are still down by about 35% uh, compared to March of 2022. A lack of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers overall. And this is actually a similar trend we've been seeing regarding pending home sales. Going back to the spring months last year, uh, fewer contracts being signed between buyers and sellers on a year over year basis going all the way back to approximately one year ago. Here's something else I also wanna share with you guys as well is that the volatility in rates this year is making it very, very challenging to report the current status of our housing market. And the, uh, the Realtors Association here also notes this as well. It says pending sales growth is highly sensitive to mortgage rate volatility. Uh, so this is month over month changes in pending home sales by price range, which as you can see here, uh, the uh, changes in uh, the, uh, n the level of pending home sales have been absolutely all over the place over the past year or so. Now here's a really good way to look at um, some early indications of demand versus lagging indicators. So again, a, a lagging indicator is a closed home sale. Again, an early indication of demand is a pending home sale. And this is pretty astonishing because in the more luxury market, closed home sales have been increasing big time. So in the range of $1 million to approximately $2 million, we saw a giant increase of 63% compared to February this year. Whereas houses um, that sold for over $2 million, a giant increase of 79% uh, compared to the previous month. However, though, look at pending home sales. The smallest increase in each of these price segments here was actually for houses over $2 million, only increasing by 2.4%. In contrast, look at $300,000 to about $400,000. They saw a giant increase of 15.2% on a month-to-month -month basis. What I'm really curious about is that um, how did the uh, Dream for All program, how is that impacting sales? Uh, that was the program in which you can um, get some um, home buyer assistance uh, in California here. And that really affects uh, more of the uh, first-time home buyers and people buying uh, the more affordable houses. So I'm guessing, or not guessing, I'm curious to see if uh, the ending of that uh, program, or I should say uh, the, uh, the full allocation of all the funds are gone uh, and they'll, they won't be uh, coming back until uh, potentially if they actually increase any more funds for that program here. Uh, but I'm, I'm wondering if this 15.2% increase in pending home sales in the range of 300,000 to 399,000 
is impacted by a lot of people who took advantage of that program in March. Of course, uh, time will tell, especially when we look at uh, paying home sales for um, April and May, uh, given the fact that um, new people can't get into that program right now uh, for that uh, dream for all um, home buyer assistance. All right, so I hope you guys are still watching this video because I have a lot to share regarding home prices here. And I actually want to um, point out an error uh, that the California Association of Realtors uh, noted here. It says here, California's median home sale price increased for the first time since October of 2022. This is wrong. Uh, the last time prices increased in California was actually in August last year. Uh, prices actually decreased from um, September to October last year. So it should read that home sold prices increased for the first time since August of 2022. In any case, the median sold price in California for March was 791,490. Uh, that's a decrease of 7% compared to a year ago, but a giant increase of 7.6% compared to February this year. Again, a friendly reminder, this is only based on single family detached houses only. Uh, and also existing houses as well. So take a look at this because here's an historical file I pulled from their website here. Uh, again, data from the California Association of Realtors, but I only pulled these two columns right here, prices and also of course the uh, month as well. I added year of year changes as well as month to month changes as well. So again, the median sold price this March was 791,000 a decrease of 7% from last year, but an increase of 7.6% compared to February, when February's prices were at 735,000. And back then, when I made a separate video about one month ago, uh, 735 for February was actually a two-year low. Prices in California at that time have declined in eight out of the last nine months. But let's talk about what happened last month though we saw a 7.6% increase in home sold prices. And this, by my analysis, is the first month-to-month -month rise since August last year, uh, breaking the previous six consecutive months of decreases on a month-to-month -month basis here. Uh, also, this 7.6% increase uh, from February is the biggest increase since March of 2022, but still slightly below the average going back to 2010. In other words, uh, this increase of 7.6% is seasonal. In other words, it's normal to see home prices increase from February to March each and every year. In fact, I actually did an analysis of this looking at the average February to March change. This is the uh, March month to month change, the difference between uh, February and March each year. I actually looked at the average uh, change going back to 2010. And based on my uh, nerdy um, uh, formula right here, the average is actually an, a gain of 8.3%. Let me repeat that. The average is a gain of 8.3%. Whereas this year, we saw a gain of 7.6%. So a little bit below the average going back to 2010, but not too much far off either. In regards to the year over year change in um, California here, uh, this 7% decrease compared to March of 2022 is only the fifth time that prices have fallen from a year ago in the last 11 years, excluding May of 2020, which was really impacted by COVID lockdowns uh, than anything else. So for the past, uh, what is this, past five consecutive months, we've been seeing decreases on a year-over-year -year basis. Also, by my analysis as well, uh, this 7% decrease is also the biggest year-over-year -year decline since October of 2011. Uh, back in October 2011, home sold prices decreased by 9% compared to October of 2010. So the biggest year-over-year -year decline since October of 2011. Uh, one reason for this is this right here. Look at one year ago, which is uh, this uh, row right here. One year ago, home sold prices increased a whopping 10.2% compared to February. They jumped from 772,000 to $851,000. And therefore, because prices uh, increased by 10.2% um, one year ago, and we only saw a 7.6% increase this year, this is one reason why home sold prices decrease uh, more uh, compared to last month. It's also possible because um, prices increased by 4% uh, 
uh, back in April last year, it's possible we'll see this number actually get worse next month. Um, unless, of course, uh, prices don't increase at the same rate uh, that we saw back in April last year. I also did some additional analysis as well. Um, so <laughs> if you guys like this additional analysis, you know, please leave me a comment below because uh, this um, these formulas here take me a while to uh, compile. So if you guys like these uh, types of analysis, then please leave me a comment below. I also want to share the uh, changes from last year's peak. Uh, last year uh, in May 2022 was when we had the all-time record high for the median sold price here in California at just over $900,000. Now it's $791,000. This means that prices have decreased by 12% compared to last year's highs. And this 12% decrease from last year's highs is a little bit worse than the national average. On a national average, um, home prices have decreased by about 10%. Also, just like my previous videos, I actually was really curious to see what was the percent change during that same time frame, looking at pre-COVID levels. So looking at the change in home sold prices during that same time frame, May 2019 through March of 2020. Again, I looked at May through March this year. So May 2019 through March of 2020, home sold prices decreased by 0.2%. Whereas this year, they decreased by 12%. Also back in 2018, May 2018 through March of 2019, prices decreased by 5.8%. So the decrease we saw this year down 12% is of course much worse than 2018 as well as 2019. And also just for fun, the change in home prices uh, during May 2008 through March of 2009 was a decrease of a whopping 35.4%. Let me just uh, show that with you guys real quick here. So back in May 2008, um, prices were at 386,000. They decreased to 250,000 by the time we hit March of 2009. In addition, look at these year of year changes. I mean, drastically, the market absolutely tanked uh, down by more than 30% from um, April all the way until we hit May of 2009. And also, just for fun, um, home prices in California over the past two years have only increased by 4%. Also, the uh, gain we saw in 2022 was only a 1% gain. It's more normal to see home prices increase by about 3% each year. Okay, hope you guys uh, like that additional analysis regarding home prices. Uh, let's go ahead and move right on. So let's look at condos and townhomes very, very quickly. I have one slide to share with you guys. The median sale price this March was 640,000. One year ago, it was 660. This means that home sold prices for condos and townhomes had decreased by about 3%. Meanwhile, the price per square foot for March uh, for single family houses was 388, an increase of 4% compared to February, but down 7.2% from March of 2022. Um, here's something that's um, a very big change as well. Uh, this is the average sale price to list price ratio. So at 99.1%, this means that home sellers in March sold their houses for 1% below their final asking price. This is drastically different compared to a year ago when on average, houses were selling for about 4% over the asking price. Now they're selling for about 1% below. Now here's something you guys should be aware of though, is that this ratio was tanking in the last half of 2022, whereas this year it's more or less going straight up. So a sharp reversal in March compared to the giant decrease we saw last year. What of course this means is that um, our housing market is getting more competitive as home sellers are selling their houses for very, very close to their final asking price. Now here's another way to look at this. Here's a share of houses that sold above the seller's asking price and that jumped big time in March. So the share of houses selling over the seller's asking price this March was 35.8%. One year ago, it was 71.2%. And also the peak was in April last year at 72.8%. So approximately 73% of houses that sold last April sold above the seller's asking price. Now it's only 35.8%. Now another way to look at this is that um, at 35.8% selling over asking, this means of course that approximately 64% sold at or below the seller's final list price this March. So approximately 
One year ago, only 29% of houses sold below the seller's asking price. Here's something also that's very, very important to note as well, because um, I'm seeing some misinformation out there that uh, people think that because prices have been decreasing from last year, it means that houses are actually cheaper right now. And that's simply not the case. And the reason for that is this right here. One year ago, the average 30 year fix uh, for people with exceptional credit, of course, was 4.17% back in March of 2022. But this March, it increased to 6.54%. So here's where the confusion lays. Home prices are down 7% compared to one year ago, right? So one would assume that because prices are down 7% compared to 12 months ago, that houses are cheaper. In fact, they are not. Uh, because rates have increased from uh, 4.2 to approximately 6.5%, this means your average monthly housing payment has increased by 21.1%, even though prices are down by 7%. In other words, houses today in California are actually less affordable uh, compared to 12 months ago due to the giant surge in rates, even though prices are going down. Okay, I also have an update for you guys regarding housing inventory or the number of houses for sale in the state of California. Uh, the month supply again is at 2.2 months. One year ago, it was 1.6 months. Um, <laughs> this is uh, kind of laughable because this is a chart showing the month supply going back to January of 2005. Back in 2007 and 2008, the month supply was in the range of 14 to about 17 months. Now it's only 2.2 months. In regards to the number of houses for sale in the state of California, it has now decreased for six consecutive months. I will say that inventory levels tend to decrease in the second half of the year every single year, but it's not normal to see decreases in March, for example. So again, uh, decreasing for six consecutive months. Look at 2018 though. In 2018, inventory levels started to increase in February. Back in 2019, they increased in March. So when looking at pre-COVID levels, it's entirely normal to see increases in the number of houses for sale in March. Whereas this year, inventory is actually going down. In fact, look at this. This is the year of year change of active listings or housing inventory uh, compared to one year ago. Look at this, only a 5.2% increase in the number of houses for sale compared to one year ago. Whereas uh, just a, a few months ago, we're seeing gains in the range of 60 to 80%. And this 5.2% increase uh, from 12 months ago is actually the smallest increase in the last 13 months, which is a very, very big problem due to this right here. New listings decreasing by 30% compared to March of 2022. So new listings are down, which is actually causing inventory to actually decrease as well. Uh, in fact, this is a recurring problem here because for the past nine consecutive months, we've been seeing decreases of new listings on a year over year basis. This of course is because a lot of people do not want to sell their houses and give up their low rates uh, below 3% or 4%, especially given the fact that rates are around 6.5% right now. So new listings for March were just under 16,000, uh, a fairly significant increase compared to last month, but compared to pre-COVID levels, uh, back in uh, March of 2019, there was just over 26,000 new listings that month. This means by my dumb math that new listings have decreased by 40% compared to March of 2019. And this of course is one of the main reasons why inventory has only increased by 5% this last month. All right, let's change gears again and talk about days in the market. I only have uh, two more slides to share with you guys. So days in the market was 19 days this March. One year ago, it was only eight days. By the way, at eight days uh, one year ago, that was more or less on par with the all-time record low uh, for houses selling very, very fast. Uh, but days in the market has been decreasing for the past month or so. And lastly, the share of houses for sale that have reduced their asking prices is at 29.8%. So approximately three of every 10 houses for sale in California right now have reduced their asking prices. Um, this is a giant decrease compared to the highs we saw uh, last fall at approximately 45%. But also at 29.8% though, 
this is more or less on par with pre-COVID levels. And with that said, please comment below your biggest takeaways from today's video. Also, if you guys got any value out of this video whatsoever, then please hit the like button. I appreciate that. I, of course, appreciate you. I uh, hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.